Welcome to the ESPN Esports Studio. I'm Victoria Arlen, joined by the fabulous Emily Rand. Yeah. Emily, the NALCS Spring Split mm -hmm. is about to wrap up this weekend, meaning the first split of franchising has been completed. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts thus far? I think we saw a lot of non-endemics kind of stepping up, um, some newer franchises in the scene, especially 100 Thieves obviously is now in the final and that's massive. Uh, they've done pretty much everything you'd want, like everything you'd want from a new franchise they've done right in terms of branding, in terms of putting together a team that kind of progressed and learned together and is now in the finals uh, together. It's a team of veterans that, you know, you could see them slowly developing and improving from week to week. We also saw the same from another one of the new franchises, Clutch Gaming, which is the Houston Rockets, basically. So yeah, it's been really interesting to watch some of these newer teams come in and have a lot of success. Now, how are the owners taking to kind of this new model and with these new teams in this in this league? Um, I mean, I think a lot of the existing brands that were accepted to franchising are kind of just doing what they did previously because they did already have either that name power, or that brand power. They had mm -hmm. players that everyone was familiar with, uh, even rosters like TSM, for example, that actually wasn't very successful for the first time ever. They're missing the NALCS finals because of some of these new teams coming up. Uh, they actually got eliminated by a new team in Clutch who just prepared really well for them. Um, so I think that is what you're starting to see is maybe some of these endemics finding that they need to find new ways to stay on top and be challenged by some of the newer teams where they weren't previously. And we've got a lot of big names behind some of these teams, as you mentioned, Rockets, Warriors, and also Rick Fox, of course, has Echo Fox. How have these big names impacted or disrupted the NALCS ecosystem and has it been for the better? Um, I think ultimately it's, it's going to be for the better. I think it was a little bit weird at first when these names starting, mm -hmm. started coming in, especially since a lot of times when you have non-endemics coming in, they might not make the best roster decisions mm -hmm. or research a lot of things. We've also seen that happen with some teams that might not lo no longer be in an ALCS. Um, so I do think that it definitely shook up the way that both new and older teams were looking at uh, this new franchise system. And going forward, I think we'll see teams continue to try to improve, uh, not only in terms of their rosters, but also like brand reputation and stuff like that. What, in your, in, out of your view, what has been the biggest surprise? Um, I definitely think both Clutch and 100 Thieves, especially 100 Thieves for me, I was really wrong about them. I thought they'd take a lot longer to come together, I guess. Not that I didn't think they had a bad roster, but a lot of times when you have hybrid rosters and especially a lot of veterans coming together, um, even when they get along, people are going to have a lot of really ingrained behaviors and really specific ways at looking at the game. And sometimes that doesn't always work well in terms of communicating as a team, which is very important in League of Legends. But obviously, 100 Thieves has completely proved me wrong. <laughs> uh, they're in the finals, so I'm really excited to see what they can do there. Thank you, Emily, as always, with your incredible insight. For more esports coverage around the NALCS playoffs, keep it right here on ESPN.com esports.